There was a sentiment online as well as internally that a lot of folks wanted the tunnels. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of tunnel talk, you know. Welcome to Tunnel Talk, a no facts, all feelings wrestling podcast. We're three women new to the world of professional wrestling, and what we can't figure out from context, we're making up as we go. We have friends who are better at learning. They're not on this podcast. I'm Allie. I'm Ann. And I'm Leah. How long did we have that intro? It had to have been like two, a year. Like two years. I think it was longer It was than not that. two years. It was It not. was a long I, time. I doubt it was even a full year. I, mm, well, you know what? I can't prove it, so I won't venture <laughs> guess. But n- newer listeners, what you heard was our initial little, uh, we had to, we still don't know very much, but we had to be a lot clearer up front initially about how little we knew. How <laughs> so we had the slightly longer intro to let people know, like, be this, nice to us. The this confidence is- we had after having watched wrestling for six, seven months to start a podcast. It's the confidence of a mediocre white man, and I, I think we should be celebrated for it. I think that we knew, though, we, we said we need to be, uh, we need the podcast to learn anything. If we yeah. don't make this podcast, we're, <laughs> we're never going to improve learn. ourselves. No. There's no. so much that we're never going to grasp. Yeah. We need, <laughs> this was a tool for us. Yeah. No, but I mean, like, this was, like, the disclaimer, like, at the front that's, like, this flashing lights may cause epilepsy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, this is, this is when we were like, listen, don't send us a message and say like, that was dumb. We know, we We know know. it was dumb. And my favorite Happy thing, anniversary, girls. Do we even say yeah, that's, that's why, why we're, we're doing our that's about this is Because yeah. it is our three-year anniversary today, three the years. day of recording. Yes, mm, that's man, the day of recording. Ali, my favorite other thing about this is that it was just one day we logged on to do the podcast, and you said, I'm not reading all that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this shorter. And we were like, yeah, that, that probably adds up. I feel like someone. I feel like someone actually was like, we have to stop telling people that we're this dumb. We're a little smarter now. And I don't think it was me, but I love it if I was just like, can't talk that much. (laughs) That doesn't sound, it doesn't really sound like me, but (laughs) that was my memory that you were like, I'm not saying all that anymore. (laughs) (laughs) It would be, it would be unusual since I love to run my stupid little mouth, but (laughs) I love, maybe that's what happened. Congratulations, past Allie. Now, (laughs) Allie, I actually (laughs) wanted to make a formal apology to you because Mm -hmm. last week on the pod, I think you got Mm -hmm. muted. Um, Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The whole time, yeah. We couldn't hear you. I don't know. Yeah. I'm really sorry When we got the tracks together, we were like, where are the Allie tracks? And we're like, well, we just got to put it out as is. (laughs) Listeners, I had a dream last night (laughs) that I was recording this podcast with my friends. You know them, Leah and Ann. (laughs) And... (laughs) <laughs> and I fell asleep in the middle of recording and they just like ended the podcast without me. So to be clear, they're kind of in the right for anything they did in this dream scenario, I guess. <laughs> since I went, I went to sleep in the middle of recording, but I woke up and I was like, oh shoot, they didn't ask me anything about the rodeo. Like I, th- I was going to tell them a whole bunch of stuff about the rodeo. So then in the dream, I keep being like, guys, do you think maybe we should go back and re- record a section about the rodeo? And they're both just blanking me in the group chat. I don't think I mentioned this, but it, like Leah in this dream scenario, she keeps just sending things like, oh no. And then it's just like a link to a fun video. <laughs> just not... <laughs> I woke up disgruntled and I told my friends about this and they said, Liz Raz, Liz Raz about that. <laughs> we're going to pretend Imme- she didn't even go to the rodeo. Immediately. We were, we were like, let's start a bit that she's been here the whole time. It's such rude behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Alexandra, how was the rodeo? How was thank the you, rodeo? Mm, thank you so much for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a little worrying that like my subconscious was so preoccupied. Like they better ask me how my <laughs> rodeo experience was. Uh, it was good. It was. You know, I'm a little bit of a regionalist now, accidentally, because I've been out here in Minnesota for ten years. So 
I kept comparing all of the, you know, they have a big convention center basically where you're wandering through and you're looking at different kinds of bulls and <laughs> there's a little miracle of life area and sure. a cow's placenta is hanging out. Like that's the kind of stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I kept being like, well, we have a much better setup here in Minnesota for the state fair because <laughs> we've got a lot of permanent barns. So it's actually, it's a really beautiful setup here in Minnesota. I don't know why everyone talks about the rodeo that much. But then um, Texas needs to hear it, to be honest, you know. Well, they don't need to hear this next part, though. So <laughs> my, we then we, we did go into the stadium where the rodeo events actually are happening. My brother and his now wife had purchased. So the, there was a Jonas Brothers concert that night. And to get Ooh. into the stadium, you need to have a ticket to the event that's happening mm. that night. So they had bought, but the tickets were expensive for some reason. I don't, <laughs> I don't know that I think that the Jonas Brothers are such a draw. Because their fans are now old enough to have disposable mm, income as well. That's why. true. <laughs> that sure. is right. But um, so they had bought these five disparate cheap tickets from all over the stadium and they were like we're just gonna go find a row to squat in which is my nightmare like i i like to really follow the law okay and I learned that that's not what's happening in texas that much they were like we'll just squat in a row till someone makes us leave we get into the stadium we had to go up so far because we're going up to like the rafters to find some seats that people aren't in and when i came out into the seat the seating and looked down at the rodeo I felt like I was in a Star War. Like, that's how (laughs) far up I was. I felt like I was in the Galactic Senate looking down at a rodeo. I was getting vertigo. Like, I don't go, I guess I don't go to big events that much, but I was just like, this can't be normal. This can't be normal. It can't be normal for something to be this big and you'd be up this high and then you look down and little children are just roping steers. They had these, they had these pairs of, it was like carriages, buggies, with pairs of horses <laughs> racing, racing each other in the rodeo ring in the intergalactic stadium. And I did afterwards, I did say, I think things may be bigger in Texas. Nice. <laughs> I was hoping that was the punchline that you were driving towards. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it wasn't a punchline and it was a real realization <laughs> I had. And it was, it's something that has made me understand our country better. Mm. Good. That's good. I'm glad you had a real growth experience yeah i mean i guess we could call it that sure i learned (laughs) i learned and i and i my my mind expanded so but i what i also learned is i don't like being up that high so big oh scary yeah yeah i kept thinking like you could fall (laughs) you could fall (laughs) so true (laughs) so you're not gonna climb everest I think I personally won't, and I'm. I personally am also glad that Darby will not be doing that this year. <laughs> and I hope we all are. I hope he never does. Yeah, yeah. I hope he yeah. lost his deposit and he takes a hard look at his choices. <laughs> I hope he's destitute now. <laughs> I hope he can't afford it. I hope he can't afford anything. <laughs> Uh, Well, you guys did a wonderful job uh, on the podcast uh, last week. I had a great time listening to you while I packed and on the plane, and I really felt itchy. I was like, I can't believe I wasn't there. I can't believe I didn't get to record with them. We missed you. It's always always hard to be a two-legged stool. So true. true. It's not what's best for us as a group. (laughs) No. It's not right. (laughs) After three years? Yeah, this doesn't balance the same way. (laughs) <laughs> no. You got to think about it the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Learned one way of podcasting. I can't, can't, can't mix it now. up. No. Mm-mm. No. Well, we're good at it. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's, that sounded so arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're amazing at it, obviously. <laughs> we're, ama- we're amazing at our specific like niche of derangement like we do that better than anybody yeah 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 we do think i really just tunnel talk we're good at hanging out with each other (laughs) you know we're good at having a good time (laughs) (laughs) we're fun loving girls and we're good at that that's Um, true nobody nobody get mad at me i don't think we're especially good at podcasting (laughs) we're better than we were when we started that's all you can hope for. It's true. Uh, and when we logged onto this Zoom, was like, should we record the pod with our built-in Mac mics? And 
<laughs> in tribute. I think it'd be great. Yeah. yeah. We'll have one person be almost inaudible and another person shouting <laughs> into the mic. Yeah. We'll, we'll be doing like work Zoom call meeting protocol where you don't laugh out loud because we had to like train ourselves to like laugh at them into the mic. Yeah. Yeah. We're, it was hard we're like first. on mute when we're not talking. <laughs> Perfect. Take, let's let's take them back and see just how bad it can be. <laughs> Make them really appreciate our our current infrastructure. Are you guys happy? Happy we've been we've been podcasting for three years. I imagine if this was the moment that I was like, <laughs> I have to. Say, it would re- no. It would really derail the episode. I'll say that. <laughs> Girls, it has been weighing on yes. me. Actually, <laughs> this is. I have to give you some bad news about my live stream future. Cuts out. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, you know, just surviving, like, I mean, the the worst of the pandemic was, like, you know, over by the time we started, but, like, it was, like, the weirdest part of the pandemic, you know? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. experiencing 2021, I don't think I could have done it without you guys. And we wouldn't it have really... done it without producer Marjorie. Like, we just yeah. kept being, no. like, ha ha, yeah. like... What if we what if we started a podcast and then she <laughs> popped us into a little group chat and said, "Girls, it's in your reach." <laughs> she said, "It's actually literally anybody can start a podcast," and we were all shocked, Pikachu. Just like that can't be right. <laughs> I think we were like, "Ha ha, yeah, totally." And then she was like, "So are we recording a pilot episode on Sunday?" And we were like, "Oh, I mean, I guess, yeah." <laughs> how many How many pilots do you think that we did? Did we do two? I think two. Oh, did we? Yeah, I think we did two. Our oh, lost that episodes. would be they're not lost funny. they're purposefully <laughs> put <laughs> away yeah. that would be very funny to look at uh, yeah to to again I'm gonna that's maybe true see if see I can, if find can dig those. them up yeah, yeah go find those I wonder what we were talking about back then I mean it was another it was another world I remember but you, so in the beginning when we were fine-tuning our like note structure you were like we were just putting down topics that like we could talk about. And I remember putting something down that I had seen discussed many times in squared circle. And so you put in it, put it in the schedule and then you were like, and Leah, you wanted to talk about this. And I was like, Oh no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and so said, I just kind of thought there'd be somebody else on the Zoom. Like, I kind of thought there'd be an expert on the Zoom. <laughs> Often that's still your energy when Allie calls on you. But <laughs> Okay, but she, she doesn't en- intro things, and she'll be like, and this next topic, Leah will speak on. And then I'm like, in that moment where you're like not paying attention in school, and you're like, Jesus mm. Christ, what, what's everybody else looking at? I don't, I don't blame you for your reaction, but it is very funny sometimes. Like, you, I will say something, and you'll look at me like, how dare you? How, how dare you? And I'm like, you put it in your notes. You put it in your notes. It's your special topic. And you almost- expecting us to remember what we put in our notes. It's like our listeners expecting yeah. me to remember what I said two days after the podcast yeah. goes live. Well, I've learned that more over time. Almost, almost invariably, it's not that I don't want to talk about it. It's that I don't know what I don't know what I'm yeah. supposed to say, and so I'm scanning the notes frantically, <laughs> being like, "What are we on?" But. Uh, it's true I think, that sometimes I do act like you should be able to read my mind. I'm like, yeah. look into my eyes. You know the time. Well, you know, I do feel, whenever I do this, I, whenever I do that, I do feel like I've dropped you in a trust fall, you know. It's not <laughs> like what I want. Mm. It's okay. Just a couple but of bruised knees. I think we've gotten better, though. I think we have. Yeah. We've really hit a yeah, groove. From when we started, yeah. We've gotten a lot. <laughs> Actually, pretty good. I wanted podcast. to bring it. I wanted to bring it back positive. <laughs> now since we're just Gr- airing grievances. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been I'm, feeling very, very like simpy about our podcast today. Um, just like I there know. were so many times when like wrestling was bad and I was having mm. a bad time, and there was at least one time when. Two out of the three of us were being like, I don't know what we're going to, I don't know how I'm going to be on the podcast tonight. Like, I feel bad. And the third, I don't, I feel like it was maybe Allie was the third one being like, well, you know, we don't have to record an episode tonight. And we were like, oh no, like we should, (laughs) it'll make me feel better to record the podcast. And it did make me feel better to record the podcast. Yeah. We've never left a recording feeling worse than when we went in. So true. I think. No. Yeah. We've always felt better. And usually by a fairly exponential degree. Yeah. And I think the oh go ahead Leah. No, I I I wonder what it'd be like to listen to most of like twenty most of the uh, would you say twenty twenty three was our worst year? Would it twenty twenty two? I don't know. Yeah. 
But well, the, the, yeah. month, the, the month the month last part of 2022 September to, to September that yeah. was the bad fiscal yeah. year. Well, and then the rest of from September to December mm. of 2023 mm. was and also then September quite to bad. December. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Well, I'm I'm kind of mentally thinking about like when the Bucks and Hangman were basically being like what what's the term downcycled and Orange Cassidy had th- gotten thrown by Keith Lee into the ground. Oh my God. He yeah. hadn't known yeah, when he was right. coming back and Chuck Taylor disappeared. And so yeah. we, <laughs> ongoing like, problem. We yeah. just, <laughs> but like, do you remember we maniacally were looking for things to enjoy? Like I think, and that's when you really started getting into Brian Danielson. I had a thing for <laughs> Isaiah Cassidy. Like I got really oh, into yeah. Isaiah. You know what I mean? Like that's right. You had your Jeff Hardy phase. That was yeah. that was Ali's Kylo, Kylo Riley. Oh, oh my Omicron. Omicron surge. That's we were, right. That was the thing is that like we really fine tuned our ability to have fun. You know, it's like yeah. <laughs> are these our favorites? No, but we have to enjoy something. But now yeah. they so are. we will. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. if if we had any wisdom that we could impart to people it is probably that sometimes it's a a, it's okay to just step back from wrestling unless you're doing this podcast in which you can't (laughs) (laughs) but if you're bummed (laughs) it's okay to just say you know what not for a while but if you're not going to step away just treat it like a Treat it like you're you're cruising radio stations and your favorite station is down and you have to find another station yeah Okay, right. just yeah. just ha- make yourself have fun, and sooner or later it will be real fun. Usually, yeah. And, and this podcast was such a, like a healthy exercise because it was often like I don't want to be like a huge negative bummer on the podcast, so I've got to think yeah. of things this this week that I enjoyed and I'm going to have fun talking about. And you know, when you start looking for good things, you can find them. You can find them. This this podcast uh, invented manifesting, I believe. Actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did what did I what little uh, hippy dippy thing did I quote the other day? Like I what I uh, the I, I don't chase receive, I, I don't chase <laughs> I receive <laughs> I yeah what belongs to me will find me yeah oh my god but, but not in a I think it's still it's still good to listen we've felt our feelings we've criticized things we've. Yeah, we, we've been mad. We've had the whole range of emotions, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is to have a little laugh. Am yeah. I? <laughs> it's to fly into Brian Cage's mouth. <laughs> right. You find the humor there. <laughs> yeah. oh. I know. Wow. And, like really, towards the end of the year, but I mean, there were many times in 2023 when I was like, "Boy, if it weren't for the podcast, I wouldn't be watching wrestling." And thinking like, if one of the other girls said they didn't want to do the podcast anymore. I would be all right with that. I'm not going to be the one to say it, but like if they wanted to unchain us, yeah. I would go along. <laughs> but like it's really nice because now like yeah. wrestling has been so enjoyable. And since we've been on the social suplex I network, know. like I've been feeling so good about podcasting because we've gotten yeah. such nice like interactions with various people we that I'm like so you guys, happy. We love hearing from you and hearing yeah. that uh, you have fun listening to us. That's really nice for us. Sorry to yeah. interrupt Dan, but. No, it's just like, it's so nice when you're like, wow, we stuck through it with it through some rough yeah. times and now I'm really happy. And I mean, it also like structure, hanging out with you guys is always very fun yeah. and really structures my week. So I would probably fall apart without it. This this summer, producer Marjorie did ask to take a step back because she got, like, she spent two and a half years listening to a wrestling podcast. That she doesn't watch wrestling. <laughs> she doesn't we watch love wrestling. her so much. Yeah. Yeah. She Which doesn't watch love wrestling her so much. and she, she doesn't took watch care it. of us for two and a half yeah, years. She's, she's care of us. Uh, responsible for a lot of women-centric podcasts existing yes. yeah. now, single-handedly, yes. does yes. not watch wrestling. But when she, when she said that, I did have the moment where I was like, is this it? Because I was like, mm. you know, like, we could all call it because I think it was sh- like sh- – her saying that really didn't come at like a great time at wrestling. And I did think about it where I was like, should we all stop? But I sort of feel like, you know, if we hadn't lived through that misery, we wouldn't be experiencing how fun, like we wouldn't be appreciating like a, how fun wrestling is right now. And B like how nice it is to have like the social suplex guys to like have Trish and Sarah around. Like, I don't know. It's just a good landscape. And it's like, girls, we pulled each other through the desert but yeah. now we're now we're in Dubai. Like we made you it. You know what? <laughs> Listen, it's we weird were... and creepy, but it's nice. 
We were in the Arctic wilderness, but none of us yeah. ate each other. None we of us did. ate each other. <laughs> we did not. We just no. all lived. We promise we did not oh eat my Mr. Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the- Who we miss okay. every day. Yeah. Oh, we miss her. Yeah, I mean, we, love, she, we, love you, we drew yeah, lots we fairly, and, and we miss her very much. <laughs> You got. We, we learned. We learned a lot about uh, can, cannibal law. <laughs> this cannibal. Week. That's a yeah. It's a custom of the sea. Just it was a normal thing that um, that you could eat your shipmates if you were like adrift on a raft in the sea, as long as you drew lots fairly. And these are these and other topics we explore in our Discord, <laughs> in our Discord channel. Yeah, come join us. It's a rollicking good time in there. Yeah. We've got to have a talk at some point about why cannibalism is the zeitgeist of the past few <laughs> years. I know there's a there's some kind of thesis in there. Am I right? Mm, mm. Yeah. When did uh, it start? Twenty pandemic ish. I don't. We're gonna have to. You know what? We're gonna have to do a little research, and we'll bring that back to the <laughs> <laughs> little research topic for us. For yeah, this week. a little something for us to do this week. Uh, do you guys want to actually talk about actual wrestling? The the thing that we're here for. The thing we're here for, you know, that we love, love that we're <laughs> we glad we've we, stuck with. We're glad we've stuck with it. You know what? Wrestling has enriched me, and I hope that we continue <laughs> to enrich wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> we do something. We, we, we do something. are putting a different energy out there into the wrestling ecosphere. For so sure. True. Okay. Uh, Cope and Christian had their big, sexy I quit match in Toronto on Wednesday and finally got their hands on each other again. Should I say it, ladies? You should say no. it. Hubba hubba. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, yeah. Ellie was weirdly demure. She was like, I probably won't say that on the podcast. And I was like, it's of all not the things we've said. What's well, not usually when be she... horny. I think it sounds like kind of twee. I think it sounds kind of like, <laughs> like I'm a twee baby being like, hubba hubba. <laughs> it's like I've never sounded more like I'm a little wine mom. <laughs> hubba when hubba, said, am I right? She, she's a Negroni mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Negroni. Mo- oh yeah, we're having our we're having our what is this called? Tunnel the it's tunnel tunnel cocktail. cocktail. The tunnels. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> always have a themed themed drink for our anniversary, and this year it's the tunnel. It's yeah. the tunnel. I forgot to say that at the rodeo there was a big sign just leading into a little enclosure. I couldn't see everything happening in there that just said the rabbit hole, and I hmm. thought to myself, "You've heard of the good boy hole." <laughs> 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 Is it for good rabbits or bad rabbits? I guess all rabbits go to the same place. (laughs) Interesting. Universal rabbit salvation. (laughs) Okay, hubba hubba. Uh, This match (laughs) featured Canadian hockey crowd spots, ladders, gouging, spearing, splashing, interference, some of the yam bag variety from Shana Wayne, Nick Wayne, and Kill Switch, and a big brave save from Danny Garcia and Matt Menard. Uh, Cope's crew ended up handcuffing the patriarchy minus Mother Wayne uh, to the turnbuckles, and Cope uh, spiked Christian in the junk with his special spiking tool uh, (laughs) just before Christian finally gave in. And now I just remembered something I was going to say, which is that do you think that the ring the squared circle is our podcast and that we are handcuffed to the <laughs> yeah sometimes happier than other times yeah and uh, Dax and, Dax FTR is, keeps just hitting us <laughs> in the nuts in the, the yeah tool. bag region <laughs> not the yeah bag CM Punk spiked us in the yam bag quite a few times oh god <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Someone got him out of the ring. Okay, overall thoughts and vibes. Uh, horny. I The yeah. noises. I think if you Deeply. took the noises from this match <laughs> and you just mm. put it unedited <laughs> over a porno, it would be fine. It would be indistinguishable. And I, and I wish someone wow. would. <laughs> I heard about the visuals of, too. Yeah. yeah, when they got those handcuffs out, I was like, "Oh, they're doing this on basic cable. Cool." There were quite a few moments where my eyes were bugging out of my little head, like, "Wow, wow, son." <laughs> <laughs> 
they went so hard. I wasn't really expecting Cope and Christian to have it in them to go as hard as they went. I was very I know. Impressed. Because AEW does a fair amount of these, right? Like, and so like there's yeah. times where like I get impatient with them, you know, even people yeah. that I love, like, you know, like there there's a lot of matches you know, chaos matches that I'm like, oh, I love everybody in this, but I'm not tracking it. It's too busy. There's too much going on. Mm. And like, I, I'm overwhelmed. But this one, I really, I mean, it helps that there was only two guys in it, but it, like, I really thought that they did a great job of like lingering in a spot just the right length of time and then like moving on again, but never moving too quick either. I just thought it was fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And they did really creative stuff too. Like the hockey jersey stuff was, was very so funny fun. and delightful. And, Of all the things that Dave Meltzer will go to town on, I really desperately wanted him to tell us whether that was planted. It had to have been planted, right? Like, those two jerseys that fit them exactly in the crowd at the exact right space. But, like, they really did a great job of, like, making it seem like maybe it wasn't because he pulled it off that guy's body. And that guy was giving this little face like, ah, which kind of made you be like, well, was it planted? But it was just like, put this on and at some point, you know, it's going to factor into things. Yeah. Like how much did mm. he know? Maybe yeah. they knew everything. And we're marks. I don't know. But I, his face looked so delighted. Like he just looked like, I cannot believe this is <laughs> happening to me. It's some local wrestler and that was like his acting triumph that, of yeah. his life. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you, you were serious you know. for a moment, and I was like, wait, do you know that, Ian? And then I realized. <laughs> I mean, I think it's probably true, but I don't know that for a fact. <laughs> now, what did you guys think about, so someone in our group chat pointed out, they were like, well, it might have been one of you, I don't remember. But it's like, they were like, it's funny that Bryce is just having to carry a microphone around for this whole match. Was this one of you? Am I no. stealing from my, oh, no. great. maybe it was Caroline. Uh, he's just having to carry this microphone around. <laughs> Which ended up being funnier than I ever could have imagined because of how much of the match was just Bryce putting the microphone in a man's face and saying, and do you consent to continue? (laughs) (laughs) What's your light? Do you consent? (laughs) And they say, yes, I want to keep going. (laughs) It was a very, very safe match. It was very safe. Very Very sensual. Everybody continually consented for the match. Bryce Rems were consent- (laughs) king (laughs) it's so funny i know we've seen i quit matches before but it must have been so early on that i did not retain anything because i do not remember this and like reading the premise of an i quit match is like they just go until they say i quit isn't that every (laughs) match like that's not a new thing but like the microphone really added so much that i was like it certainly did match should have a microphone i quit (laughs) yeah yeah i think it's like supposed to be like more humiliating like when your little when your older brother makes you say uncle and you're like "Mm." it's it's worse than when he just gets you down so tapping uh, out so much more dignified yeah yeah, apparently (laughs) (laughs) some of those submission holds are they dignified i would say no but Mm. sure (laughs) in fact i would say most of them are not but we have we've often learned that our idea of dignity and the idea that the broader IWC has, they're not always alive. <laughs> I still I still remember fairly early on, uh, we, it's, uh, our friend Caroline's roommate's boyfriend was into wrestling. And we were like, ask him what he sees when he's watching wrestling or something. We said it better. And the answer immediately was like, not what you guys see. <laughs> and do you feel like there were different times when we tried to feel out men, straight men where we're like, so... What did what did you think of of that little the part where they kissed each other sloppily on the mouth and he was like two men really fighting each other and you're like masculine cool <laughs> good to know really feeling deep uh, I do think that's the one thing this match was missing for me mm. was some sloppy kissing yeah tongue. yeah Just yeah with tongue yeah I but agree. you know what they're still on their journey so mm. it I might surely kind of tell. Once they unite as a evil gay tag team, surely they'll sloppy kiss that, right? Do you guys? <laughs> I just had whatever. I can't get into all that. <laughs> it's not a cool reference. Okay, uh, Cope. So Cope did win, and he does have the TNT belt now. Uh, what do you think he's going to do with it, or what do you want to see him do with it? I wanted him to win this match, but I couldn't reconcile that with having the belt because I'm like, oh, no, 
he shouldn't have the belt. I wanted him to beat Christian, and I don't want Christian to have the belt anymore. But Cope has the belt? No. No. He has. He needs to immediately lose it, yeah. probably to Danny Garcia. To like, Danny Garcia, real bad. Yeah. Like, probably at Dynasty or, like, in the TV matches before Dynasty. <laughs> you know, like, I, I can't say how immediately it should happen. Dynasty would be cool just because it would be cool for Danny Garcia. Yeah. yeah exactly. And it's like, let him, you know, you don't want him, you don't want to make him seem like too cucked. Like, you want to match and then he <laughs> Yeah. Like, last time he lost his last three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. yeah. Three minutes. So he can, he can have like a month. Sure. <laughs> I don't know why I'm Generously. defending him in that way. I'm like, and please <laughs> give him a minute. <laughs> the man has his dignity. <laughs> We really got uh, changed by uh, Percy Jackson. We're like, oh, Cope, yeah, Cope kind of do guy. He wants. <laughs> yeah, kind of our little guy. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm interested to see what character stuff we get into. I mean, I I hope that the belt has a bad a bad effect on him. To I be hope honest, so. I hope yeah. he gets a little poisoned by the belt. He starts acting bad. He's understanding mm. Christian a little better. He's missing I, his hands on that body, you know. I just remembered I had a dream the other night where Cope was an astronaut saving the world and he and I were on a spaceship <laughs> flying around trying to save it. I'd been watching Oppenheimer the night before and there was the part where like they're afraid the atomic bomb might ignite the whole atmosphere and blow up the whole world and so we were preventing that I'm pretty sure it was an interesting choice <laughs> that my subconscious made like yeah Adam Copeland for sure wow I'm that's, glad you guys were preventing that that's really <laughs> civic minded don't worry both. we're on it <laughs> that's how you know that our brains are like really like messed up because it's like yeah that's the kind of sex dreams we're having we're astronauts <laughs> Uh, we are very professional in this dream, and I'm not. It's not a joke. We were. And it's like, don't laugh. Nothing we were untoward colleagues. happened. And it's like you were on Earth. What you want to die on Earth? No, we took our job seriously. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Anne. Thank you for taking care of us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We love you so much. Let's move for. on to our next topic, shall we? Let's do it. Mercedes Monet opened Dynamite for the second week in a row. New outfit, same dancing. She cut a promo referencing the injury that kept her out of commission for most of last year and then introduced a video package about what she's been up to post-WWE. Uh, she also warned Julia Hart and Sky Blue not to interfere with her desire to settle scores with Willow Nightingale. A bit of a, I kind of had to wade through that one. Uh, and then, oh, who kayfabe broke her ankle. So then Julia Hart and Sky Blue ambush her in the ring, fighting. Stat and Willow run out for the save. Willow's maybe going to chair Mercedes, but doesn't. Later backstage, Renee interviewed Stat and Willow about their Rampage main event street fight. This was happening at the end of the three hours of wrestling that we watched last <laughs> night because we were really good girls. Oh my God. Mercedes interrupted. Stat thanked Mercedes for saving Willow last week. Mercedes said, and this is important, of course, <laughs> that's what a CEO does. She stands up for what she believes in. (laughs) Willow then tried to say something to Mercedes as well, but Mercedes snubbed her. Let's start with kind of a general, this is really a philosophical question, I think. (laughs) Does a CEO stand up for what she believes in? You know, I wish they would, but I think think, that they they mostly, I think they mostly lay down for money. Don't you think? They do because what they believe in is corporate profits. Yeah, <laughs> so that's guess. what they stand up for. In that <laughs> sense, you, you are right. They do stand up for it every day. It's kind of a diss more than, like, mm. I wouldn't praise a CEO for standing up for what they believe in because they believe in a hellscape that the rest of us <laughs> are forced to live in. That's right. Yeah. So... Just some of that. I mean, <laughs> the whole thing really makes you contemplate capitalism sometimes. Sometimes I, on purpose and sometimes not. Yeah. I do think it's funny she's doing this gimmick when the EVPs are also doing their gimmick because there's a lot of similarities that she is coming across heelish. And, like, I hope it's on purpose, but I am – we'll see if it is, I guess. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. I don't know. Her vibe – I mean, like, she can't turn heel right now because it's, like – Every, like yeah. having been in that arena, I'm like it. It would be an Eddie Kingston thing where we're yeah. like, oh, like we're absolutely with you in all you in every step you take. But like, I do think that she would be an absolutely killer heel. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, what did you guys think about the in ring promo last night? Uh, it wasn't like it was. It was the same kind of promo. It didn't like thrill me but I'm also like hesitant really to like get that judgmental because I'm like you do get a few of these like it's not like there's a point that she's gonna hit where it's gonna hit like my personal like we're done and she's not 
there yet, but I am like, you might want to ration these Mercedes because they get tiring. I did feel like it was like, this is nothing, but she's, I'm in my magnanimous phase with a new debut. Yeah. It's like, you get a couple. I, I feel, enjoy your cheers. You're getting yeah. it now. <laughs> like the hammer's coming down when I'm sick of it. But yeah. so far you're, you're in your allotted quota. And I did think it was funny that she was like, guys, play this little video package that I put together. Like, as oh, that she's I, Kate Middleton. Did I ask? Did I ask no, I rewatched it, it, and she oh. actually said she herself. She asked them to oh, play wow. it, but she said she herself put it together. Which oh, I like, asked them to play this pack. To th- okay, yeah. So, like Kate Middleton, she is pretending she is doing her own <laughs> Photoshop work. I don't. Hey, I don't know what you're saying about our Duchess, who is missing, <laughs> and it's it is a serious situation, Anne, and I don't think you're taking it seriously. I know. Well, she's been dead for weeks. We all know that. So. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, and like the thing is that she's also earned like a lot of credit with me because, like, again, like she's yeah. actually doing what CM Punk said that he was going to do, right? Like, yeah. things are so like already like so much better in the women's division that I'm sort mm-hmm. of like, if somebody straight straight out said to me, the women's division will rule. Uh, things are going to get better every single week. There will be more time, more resources, whatever. But the thing that you have to accept is that every show is going to start with Mercedes doing this promo. I would accept that deal. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Yeah. And, uh, like, also, <laughs> Allie wouldn't <laughs> accept the deal. <laughs> if if the w- rest of the show had, like, the women integrated. In well, a- how long is the promo taking? Like, 15 minutes? It's a lot how of long, the show. How long was this one, 10? Well, that's what I'm asking. No, so I'm like, th- whatever this one was. Okay. The I first could watch. I couldn't watch it every week. I'm afraid. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to the women. They're gonna have to have. They're gonna have to find another way to get the job done. <laughs> Alex, I thought a hard the, negotiator. Yeah, pretty rough. I thought the the backstage segment with um, Stat and Willow was a lot better though. Yeah, like I think that that's better. the problem when they do these debut promos is like they're not interacting with anyone. They're yeah. just kind of like on their own talking to the crowd, and I feel like it's just usually a lot better when there's some interaction. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. Yeah, her being mean to Willow was already like, like had me way more interested in than anything else she had to say. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think I think there's different. Yeah, you know what? It's fine. Uh, The hammer will come down if 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 you know we don't move into something else. But it's just a little difficult right now because Tony did get so many new toys at the same time. So it's funny because like I I keep thinking like. Okada, you're such a good boy. You haven't come into the ring and done any long speeches at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're my really, special boy. It's really broad-minded of him not to... <laughs> I know, it is too many debuts at once. If they're spread out over six months, it would be a little bit easier. You wouldn't notice it as much, yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, everybody should be doing with what Okada did, which is just bullying Alex Marvez. Like, so yeah. good. That, that would have worked for Mercedes, too. If she was just backstage being very mean to Alex Marvez. <laughs> That would be very funny. It's what he's there for. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys have anything you want to flag about the uh, the street fight that ended the night? I thought it was really mean to make that because that could have been very very cool. And if it was if it was a real rampage that was like airing on a different night, it might have been fine. But knowing that like it was going to air the same night as the I Quit match. And that it was going to be the last match of a three-hour event. I watched that match with, like, my eyes slit in my face already in the pillow. Like, <laughs> I, it was good, but, like, that was mean to do to them. It was. Although I, like, went into it being, like, it is so mean and unfair to do this. Like, there's no way they'll live up to it and everybody's going to be, like, a little bitch about it. But actually, like, I loved it. I think maybe because my expectations, like, I thought it really, like, held up. And, I mean, part of it too was just they were going so hard and for some reason every once in a while something like women being sort of like 
violent and mean and not trying to look sexy. Even though I watch women's wrestling like every week, I don't know why it's this one particularly like hit me. That, no, yeah, exactly. At all. So it just felt very. I felt very like yeah, like get yeah. him. Like it felt like <laughs> I was like I bet men feel like this all the time where it's like very <laughs> cathartic to watch someone like solve their problems and be beating someone up like really and just like get away with it. It made yeah. me feel like listening to women's country singers where they're just singing about murdering their husbands or whatever. I like, dug my key into <laughs> the side of his. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, I liked it a lot. I do want us to talk about this question of, uh, with the disclaimer, that wrestlers are under no obligation to harm themselves for our entertainment. And some would argue that they shouldn't do that. In fact, <laughs> even, Allie. But I do think that when one team comes out dressed in all white, the implication mm-hmm. is that things are going to get a little bloody, bloody yeah. gutty. And things didn't get that bloody gutty, and that is fine. It is their right to not get bloody gutty. But I did feel like wrestling trained me, and now Mm -hmm. you are the training is being destroyed. (laughs) Why? We've watched for three years, and now we know what that promises us, and we were let down. Why was I not allowed to see Julia Hart? rubbing her bloody face all over oh my God. Chris Statlander's oh my God. leg. Okay. Like, all right. I deserve that. Yeah, boy. Okay, Leah. <laughs> Just gazing off into space thinking about that. So true, but is it safe to talk about it? I, mean, <laughs> I agree. I would have, li- I personally would have liked to see some blood and I wouldn't have minded if, uh, you know, when we didn't really know what was going on and we were, we didn't know really about blading. So we were kind of like, is it sometimes, is it like ketchup packets? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have minded if it were ketchup packets. I just wanted to no, see something true. really smeared all over those white clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fine to say. I think it is okay for me to say that. I think I've been fine this whole time. Oh yeah. yeah. Agree. 100%. Absolutely. Great. Really, I'm really squinting at them a little. <laughs> Do you agree? You've been I'm fine. I'm right with the microphone. Do you agree? Do you uh, anything else you want to say about the uh, the women's division right now? Any of the the characters involved here? I mean, it's not the division overall, but they should not have done a 10 minute overrun when I had watched three hours of wrestling. I that was think, outrageous. Yeah, that's we can't be. Do, we can't be doing we that, be I think. Mm-hmm. I, th- I don't think we can be doing that. Some of us have work in the morning. <laughs> <Come on>. Yeah. <laughs> it was late for you girls, too. For I mean, mm-hmm. for me, it also was late. Like, I'm really supposed to be in bed doing my Sudoku and watching my last episode of Taskmaster. <laughs> <laughs> And the dog has me on a strict routine where she needs to go out at 10 o'clock and then we begin our bedtime, you know, <laughs> bath time. <laughs> Not with me and the dog, just me in the bath, but... <laughs> But she sits next to it, you know? <laughs> she needs that. She needs that. She needs consistency. She needs structure, as all children do. Mm-hmm. Um, let's let's just not... If it's, if it's three hours, that's its own separate issue. We can discuss that at a later time, Tony. But I think once we've hit the three-hour mark, we really can't be overrunning anymore. No, Thank it's got to so be... A, for your it, attention. It's got to be a hard stop. Yeah, hard I have a hard three stop. Three hours. I have a hard yeah. stop I want it to 11. be like the pay-per-view where Sting is trying to say goodbye to us, and it just goes <laughs> black. <laughs> No. <laughs> Who knew the pay-per-views had a hard stop? Yeah, they had to get to another meeting. <laughs> that was crazy. But okay. one thing I do want to just say, like, about, like, especially, like, again, like, this is very chill if this is Mercedes. But, like, right now we have, like, whatever the hell's going on with Soraya is a storyline. I mean, not that I necessarily think it's, like lighting us up but it is a storyline <laughs> right we've got tony mm-hmm. and mariah mariah may we've got mm-hmm. willow whatever's going on with willow chris and mercedes we have whatever weird shit serena deeb is up to but she is giving <laughs> <laughs> she's getting time to do it do i know what she's doing yeah. no but to be clear she is getting time to do it and queen amadada and uh red velvet are gonna fight very soon yeah i don't know Collision? I think this weekend. Well, yeah. no, there's nothing this weekend. No, something. Next week? But, like, yeah. I, the, we could have practiced this a little bit, but because it's not, it's not <laughs> going great. But I just... <laughs> I, I just, think it's going great. <laughs> but like, the podcast cool. What? <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it is cool, though. 
though. I mean, that's the thing is like Soraya's storyline, like not saying it's great, but like usually we have one storyline and if it's right. not great, that's the trash you have to eat, you know? Yes, mm. right. Like that's the thing. They usually only give me one to be invested in. And so I have to be like, either I'm going to be a misogynist and ignore this or I'm mm-hmm. going to like have to like amp myself into it. Now I'm like, there are five storylines so I can pick and choose what I care about. How many weeks yeah. have we gotten into like the schedule and been like, I don't think we have anything to say about the women, but I feel bad not talking about the women for the millionth week in a row. It's like half the time, yeah. half of our episodes yeah. probably. And every week I put Serena Deeb on the schedule and Allie would say, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Leah, for the last time, so we're sorry, sick of Leah. talking we about Serena Deeb. We just can't do it. <laughs> do you think that Serena Deeb should, that someone is going to make some, Allie, what are you trying to say? Uh, you know, on Twitter, when people do those mother memes, like she brought her cunt from Cunt Mountain because she's mother. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The thing is that I think that would make Serena Deeb so happy. <laughs> no, I think she does want to be mother. And it's like, I'm she's not mother to me. I think there's people who may, might like to have her as mother, but they might be scared. They might be a little too scared mm. to make her mother. She's intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrifying energy out of that one. Well, yeah. Well, I do think with representation, more is usually the answer. More. So some of it is good and some of it is bad. That's the best thing you can do. More, more, more. Mm-hmm. So uh, keep at it. Okay. Lots of wrestlers have O names. Let's talk about them. <laughs> There's like t- maybe two people that listen to this that is, gonna, and they are going to that, That's going to pop them. That's yeah. going to be a huge pop. <laughs> We can't really explain why. Debut month continues with feuds being built and belts being won. Great copy, Allie. (laughs) You write for a living, Allie. (laughs) That is some Manolo shit. (laughs) It absolutely is, yeah. Uh, It it went into like a little bit of a commercial space where it's like, just got to bang out some text for this real quick. Uh, Okay, makes you think. Osprey, let's start with Mr. Will Osprey, who got another in ring promo with Tony Schiavone. He did call him a slag in a tweet this past week. <laughs> and one of the group chats we're in that is like half Brits and, or, you know, half like non Americans and half Americans. We learn a lot. We, we learn were a lot like, from our what international what compatriots. Ex- yeah, we were like, what exactly are we supposed to understand from slag? Like, what? <laughs> I think we were all like, we kind of know, we think we know what that word means, but Mm -hmm. is there like a fun connotation (laughs) that we don't know about? How mean is it? Yeah. I feel like the response we got was like, it's not super fun. (laughs) I thought it was like, (laughs) depends on who it's aimed at. And I thought it was like funny that it's aimed at Tony Schiavone, but it wouldn't be funny if it was aimed at like Mercedes. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I, 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 I think I thought to myself, I'd love to know more about how Will Ospreay and Tony Schiavone are bonding. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what they've been talking about. I guess. <laughs> it's like Tony Schiavone gets around. I've heard the rumors in the locker room. <laughs> uh, Osprey explained in this promo that the last time he was in Canada, he was a naughty boy. But he's changed and he's a sweet boy now. That's what we love to hear. Uh, mostly just the part where he called himself a naughty boy. That was very funny. I love that. Uh, he talked about Brian Danielson a little bit, some back and forth about Brian Danielson's promo. Uh, he provided some insights into his past encounters with Shibata, whom he will fight on Dynamite next week. Um, what did you guys think about the promo? Uh, I would die for him. <laughs> I thought it was quite fun. Uh, it was honest. so fun. Like the vi- the whole vibe of it was so fantastic. And he's just like, the way he skips out of the like tunnels and like his whole very happy energy and like the, I got a mortgage now, bro. <laughs> it's he so has funny not yet stopped sounding like he's a little tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> he is the best he's, drunk He's been drunk this, this whole bar. time. Yeah. He definitely has been. Unfortunately for me, his quota is up. He, he has gone through all no. his, his Hands debut promos. Denied. And it's cut off. And no, I did not enjoy his cocky little personality in this one. I was like, I'm sorry, Osprey. Oh, wow. You're, uh, you're falling down for uh, me. No, no, did I? This is like that scene sorry, in The Land Before you're... Time. The earthquake is coming. A chasm <laughs> is forming <laughs> between parts of the, of the podcast. I liked it quite a bit. And I have to say, I thought there was a degree of 
new information coming in, narrative coherence to this little speech that I personally liked. I said, if you're going to get out there and talk for a while, I like for you to reveal this number of things and kind of move from topic to topic in a fairly smooth way. It's what I prefer. I agree that I don't think he, we are, we're coming up to the end of in ring solo in ring time or even in ring time with, with, Known schla- slag, Tony Schlani, <laughs> schlag, schlag, <laughs> Tony Schlag, Bonnie. I don't know how offensive this is. I hope not that much. Maybe run that by our Brit picker, but um, well, we'll see how he continues to build. I think that when you come in with his level of like cheerful confidence, just like I, I know I'm the best, I'm having a great time. Uh, sooner or later, someone is going to have to psychologically destroy you. That's what I need to see as a viewer. Yeah. So for me, there is a big question. Who is looming on the landscape who is going to absolutely crush that confidence, make you feel like complete shit, uh, and force you to rebuild yourself into a, into a stronger and more mature man? We when have to somebody, find the man who can do that for you. When somebody appears and says, Will Ospreay, when we lived together, when you were my roommate, <laughs> we got a tattoo. It might have been Kip Sabian. I, I, think, it's right. I think it was Kip Sabian. I, I was it was at Kip's, the very least. Kip Sabian rolling in here and psychologically destroying Will Ospreay. Yeah, I'd like to see it. <laughs> I believe that he and Swerve have some history too, but I'm not uh, really informed about it, so I can't comment on all of that. Um, Any thoughts on uh, the Brian Danielson feud and like where we are on that trajectory of like, do you see, can you see what we're headed towards or not yet? I think it might be not yet. Yeah, I don't. I think someone in our group chat was saying like that it, it, would be very good to like let him keep winning up until Wembley and then he loses an embarrassing mm-hmm. match at Wembley and like is crushed and he has to spend the whole next year building towards Wembley again and then Wembley 2025 is is Brovmania. I think that would think be that, a very fun trajectory. Yeah. I, I would think be Polo, very I think Polo that. might have said that. Uh although love I'm you, Polo. Not confident. Love you Polo. Um yeah, I would love that. I must see a man crushed before he receives anything mm. good. You mm, can't absolutely. get something good before I've seen you at the bottom <laughs> of a hole. Yeah. There's and the good boy hole, the bad boy hole, <laughs> the depression <laughs> hole. And until I see you at the bottom of the depression hole, no belts. That's no right. belts. Yeah. Right, and I think, actually, that's I used to call that the pit. I would just call that the pit. I would yeah. say yeah. I'm in the and pit. Then, and then you dig a little deeper, and Brian Cage is at the bottom of the pit. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you crawl through into a <laughs> warm, wet mouth. <laughs> didn't like that. I didn't like it either, Leah. I loved it, so <laughs> <laughs> different pages. <laughs> I, was wor- I worry I've gone a little far, but... <laughs> I mean, Mel's are just wet and warm. Like, he's a human it's being. So true. You just can't argue with that. <laughs> Let's move on to talking about O name number two, Okada. Uh, Okada and the Bucks cut a backstage promo uh, early on Dynamite with the elite continuing to demand that Alex Marvez show them all respect and download Duolingo. <laughs> Obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Perfect bit. Um, the Bucks said that they couldn't come out ringside for Okada's match versus Eddie Kingston for the Continental title. Is that what it's called? Con- the Connie? For the Connie belt. Um, but they would be producing the match next to Tony Khan backstage with their, as I think Matthew pointed out, with their little headsets on. <laughs> and I said, thank you for painting a word picture. So few bother to do it, but I really like to be able to envision what you're going to look like. And then when they cut to the video, it was accurate. That's exactly yeah. what they were doing. Which Truth and advertising. Truth and thank advertising. You, thank you, Young Bucks. Thank you to our EVPs. When they were white, they get blood all over it. They get blood all over it. <sighs> Which, so by the way, true. that jacket that Matt Jackson was wearing was psychotic. Like, it looked so bad out of him. It, was, it fit so badly. And like, the buttons, Are they ordering these off of Amazon? Like, I feel like probably. You know what I would like? If I were them, I would be making it a real group activity for the backstage. <laughs> and I'd be like, <laughs> you can sign up for a week to bring me a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you're, you're going to get those for a variety of bodies. I mean, some of them are not going to fit uh, really at all. Um, I think it was a 
to say. Anyway, uh, so Eddie and Okada slugged it out, and Okada ended up winning. Uh, big celebrations backstage from the Young Bucks. Oh, this is what I was going to say, is that when they were celebrating, and they're embracing, they're so happy for Okada, and Tony <laughs> Khan is sitting there being like, I am an actor. I am doing <laughs> acting. Uh, the You really could tell how badly the jackets fit because they're riding up in the funniest places because <laughs> yeah. they've mm-hmm. moved their arms so much so it's just like a shoulder <laughs> pad up by the end. <laughs> and that's my favorite thing about an ill-fitting garment. I read <laughs> someone was speculating that they were like, I just don't think that that was filmed this week. I think it was filmed last week. And somehow I thought that was even funnier if they <laughs> staged last week that the two of them sitting next to Tony backstage and being like, okay, ready? So then Okada wins. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> It's fun to think about how the art gets made, how the sausage gets <laughs> made or is sausaged. You know, uh, I, I think we'll leave that there. What did you guys think of the match and of the, well, no, let's start with this. Should this belt exist? No. No. It should be no. a trophy. Yeah. It shouldn't, certainly shouldn't be defended. It can be a belt, like as long as it's like the Owen belt and you carry it out one time and then you leave it at home <laughs> for the rest of the year. <laughs> I just don't understand why. So it's like someone is going to have the Connie and then they go into the Connie, Connie 2, C2, is whatever. They go into the Connie. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, it's all because of the We're going to number it yeah. every year. We, the I've, C2 <laughs> this coming year, then the C3 the year after that. <laughs> We are pretty see. deep in the Negronis, but also yeah. it's like, are we covering ourselves in glory in an episode where we started off being like, we've learned so much. We're really good I at think, podcasting. I think we've said some right things, at least a few right things thus far. Yeah. I don't think that much has been really wrong, <laughs> except for just some of the words coming out of my mouth. But So, so then someone is going to take the Connie belt into the Connie, and then their energy is going to be, I'm defending this belt i think that's wrong that sounds I stupid that's wrong. i think because then wrong. what if they lose early on well i guess they'd have to lose well, it, then it doesn't the, make I think sense the belt yeah because it goes on the yeah yeah well i guess it maybe it's that they have to relinquish it and then it the goes Connie. on the pedestal and it's like yeah. you gotta re-earn it that's dumb stupid it should so be a beautiful trophy and it should be like really lovely to look at maybe <laughs> Like a beautiful antique, you're thinking? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Something like that. Or like, it's like if you could just find like an old, like a marble statue. Yeah. Or like hand carve it out of, out of like a beautiful mahogany. Yeah. You know, I, I've been whittling a spoon this week. Have you? I love that. That's a fun fact. So Tony called me. I could make a trophy prize. <laughs> My friends were at an estate sale this weekend and for some reason became obsessed with a giant, incredibly heavy <laughs> statue of Nike that was like $125. And they keep, they're still talking wow. about it where they're like, I think we could have gotten them down to like 75 And like, yeah, I just oh, keep for picturing. Yeah. I keep picturing that like, that's what's on display is like, yeah, that's you get perfect. this Greek yeah. statue. <laughs> It's too and bad then, that the poor goddess Nike really got ruined by the shoes. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a dignified god no. name anymore. Uh, but yeah, no. Right. I mean, like, okay. So the thing is that, like, if you... So Eddie's got three belts, and you want Okada to have <laughs> one belt. Eddie three this, belts, yeah. Eddie three belt. He, Okada can't really have any of the other two, because he can't... Like, you're not going to give him the New Japan belt. And no. the other one is ROH. And it's like, if you're trying to establish him as like an AEW guy, then it's like, yeah, you'd give him an AEW champ belt. But I'm like, the, why did we do the Roddy thing? Why can't like Okada have the Connie, the continent? No. International. International. Intercontinent. <laughs> International. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, please, we're trying to seem smart and you keep making new belts with similar names. There's too many mid card belts. Like, what are these for? What, what are, are they doing? Things? What, what's the benefit. distinction between an international belt and a continental belt? Besides, Tony Khan said how many all my wrestlers deserve participation awards. <laughs> no, they don't, bitch. This is why your wrestlers are that's, so badly behaved. Hey, Tony, that's what the money is for. <laughs> <laughs> why your wrestlers are badly behaved. Um, well. Anyway, so I don't think the belt should exist. I think we all agree on that. It should be a beautiful, very heavy marble statue of Nike. <laughs> we all agree about that. 
I think we've come to yeah. a real consensus on that and for we're, sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. We're and yeah. you could probably get it for about one hundred twenty-five dollars <laughs> at an estate sale in the in the Boston area. If you reached out to the company, it's probably still. I know mm. that estate sale isn't running anymore, but it's probably still in the mix, Tony. <laughs> if you reach out to the right people, so follow up. That's a follow up, an action and item for you. If you as will. a as a billionaire, you probably have access to many marble statues when you think about it. I'm kind of committed to this one now, but that is, it's very true that if he, I guess if he wanted to get it from somewhere else, he could, I don't know why he, I don't know why you would. Mm. I think this one sounds think really nice. <laughs> this one sounds really nice. Yeah. This don't worry about Tony. I'll, yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you a link to the, the company in Saugus, Massachusetts. <laughs> it might have a lead on the Nike statue. <laughs> Maybe we could all three of us pool our money and then just like mail it to AW headquarters, we like to Daly's place. Him. Yeah. That would just be, be so like, nice of us. Tony, we so generous. It. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of that nasty rinky dink belt, Tony. We got you a beautiful marble statue. The because, thing- because craftsmanship never goes out of style. <laughs> I think, like, if we ever, like, contacted Tony as often as we say that we're going to, <laughs> it's not that his life would be better, but it would be different. It would be different. It would be different. It, would be different. it enlarged, I think. I think it would enlarge his life. Did you, there was, like, a Sports Illustrated article where Cope got interviewed about this match and stuff, like, before the match happened. And um, he talked about, like, him and Christian Cage, like, like, when they were kids and obsessed with wrestling, they like found out where um, where the wrestlers would like park at the arena in their hometown. So then they'd like stalk them out there. And apparently, Christian Cage just as a teen like got in the car with some famous wrestler, and, like got in the front seat and started talking to him. He was oh like, God. "Yeah, that's no. pretty bold of him." It's like stranger yeah. danger. But that could be us with Tony Khan and this marble statue. <laughs> I love this energy for us. We just slide into <laughs> Tony's car and it's like, we need to talk to you about Nike. No, not yeah, the like con- company. The Connie belt, it's not working, but don't worry. <laughs> we got, we, we have the perfect alternative. <laughs> Tony, we got this. I think that he would, I think that he would have fun sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes, and sometimes, sometimes less, less fun. fun. Yeah. Mm. But you know, you um, can't have a hundred percent fun all the time. So Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, provided that we do have this belt, which we do, and it does exist, um, how do you feel about Okada getting it? It was fine. I mean, yeah. it seems like they want to give Okada something to play with until it's his turn. <laughs> he, he doesn't get the until debut promos, turn. so he's got to have a consolation prize. He's backstage like, Tony, why don't I get to go into the ring to talk to that flag, Tony <laughs> Shivani? <laughs> And Tony's like, I don't know, but here, have this belt. <laughs> have this belt instead. I have to say, his he has seemed so delighted to just be in these sketches and be like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I love, like, my debut job of bullying. I love being a bully. <laughs> I love to bully. And I love him. He's been so charismatic doing it. I'm like, I could watch this all day long. It's truly delightful. Um, yeah, I think it's fine for him to have it. I'm not mad about it because I don't think the belt should exist. Uh, I thought it was a really good match with Eddie yeah. and that. Eddie got new gear. He had that giant oh, coat yeah. and like okay, his yeah. alarming well, he, wide-legged pants. But his I love that his Ann had- Taylor loft pants. <laughs> yes. We must we must <laughs> say it. And Eddie, you looked beautiful. Uh, yeah. Don't worry about it. But something about that cut was so business casual. It said, <laughs> "I've got a lot of." meetings because I'm leaning in and I'm dressed like this because I'm leaning in. Yeah. Like he bought those at the outlets with his girlfriend, like, you know, mm-hmm. a couple weeks before. For sure. Uh, and it, I think we all commented on this too, that we are so unused to watching men wear straight cut or long or wide, wide-legged pants, that kind of flowy style, I kept thinking he was going to trip on them. And then yeah, having to be like, I don't think he's in danger of tripping on these, these palazzo pants. They're not palazzo <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> kind of were in that genre, though. Yeah, yeah, but, but they, they were, were palazzo towards. pants from Ann Taylor Loft. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, that's what it was, yeah. That's let's, what it was. Let's all get real. Call but a spade a spade. It's like, I think most of the men who wear long pants, either they're like tights that are tucked into the boots, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. they're like the Young Bucks, where it's like they have like an elastic 
in the bottom and are like a little bit short. And so it's like, yeah, it was very disconcerting where I was like, is he allowed to do that? <laughs> so he's kind of like a fashion icon. Yeah. Kind of so fashion <laughs> because forward. Because was his that... coat short sleeved? I think oh. it didn't have sleeves. Not at all? No, I don't think so. Hmm. Well, we're going to have to consult the, at the very least, it wasn't long sleeved. No. I think maybe he is like, kind of like, okay, Mr. Paris Fashion Week. Okay, Prada. <laughs> he looked great in that coat. Great. I loved it. Yeah. Ann Taylor Prada Fashion Week. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's our guy. <laughs> Eddie, that's I hope you're getting a guy. push. I hope that's why this new I hope you is are, out yes. there. hope that's why the training. You uh, deserve it. I'm excited to see what happens with his character arc. I'm excited to see what Okada gets up to with his little bad boy belt. Uh, he's going to be fighting Pac. That's I was fine. Kind of surprised the thing them. with Eddie was over so fast, though. I was a little bit like, "Oh, we're on to Pac." Oh, okay. I mean, that's yeah. fine. Well, it's, it, it is fine, but it's interesting that. Pack is the final boss when I would have guessed that Eddie would be like it seems yes. to me like he would fight Eddie I mean pa- he would fight Pack first and then Eddie at the yes. at the, di- at the pay- yeah pay- I agree but but I guess it's a slightly complicated situation because Pack has been out of the picture for a yeah. year so there's a real hunger for we want to see him get up do, to something serious yeah. I like I, I like I'm not Pac. obviously I'm not shitting on Eddie I think he should be doing everything and I think he is the final boss but I think it makes sense yeah. that it's kind of like okay he's com- he's coming back so we got to get him in something big high profile yeah and I mean this also opens it up to like Pack might might lose you know what I mean because like I don't yeah. I don't like I don't know which one he of probably them probably will I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure which one of them will, because they both kind of like, they both kind of need it, but they also both could take it. You know what I mean? Does that yeah make sense? So like, but like, I think if he hadn't lost to Eddie <laughs> and, and, oh, you little rascal. Oh, and, I didn't say anything. <laughs> your face said it all. <laughs> not while we're so deep in our tunnels. Anne. <laughs> in our tunnels. Yeah, I think I think they both need it, and I think they can both take it. Yeah, I agree. This This is why I don't drink hard liquor. (laughs) (laughs) Should we? Now, do you think this is anything? You know how people say roll call, hold call, (laughs) hold call. (laughs) What does that mean? Oh my god! I don't know. Do you think there's somewhere we could use that? One of I mean, our one of our followers has uh, one of our listeners has created a uh, Twitter account that's just recording who oh came God. out of which tunnel and whoever hey, you are whoever you're you are a hero. you are a hero oh thank God. you so much but also consider consider Hulk calling call. the whole call <laughs> whole call that's free that's that, free that's free for you also the service you're providing is amazing love you so much yeah. beautiful thank you so much couldn't believe it well. Um, okay, great. Well, I'm glad that we had that little linguistic aside there, and I think we better move on for, it, for, for our safety, safety, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah. So we're just going to transition into a quick little chitter chatter about what I've called here the taggy tourney. <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was quite fun and cheeky, to be honest. Taggy tourney. Thank you. Uh, so the tag tournament has commenced uh, with wild card matches preceding round one. So the infantry won their wild card match against House of Black. I believe this uh, people were not that happy about House of Black's behavior here. It but was bad. I, haven't I went and watched it. It was pretty oh. wild. I didn't watch it, but I did uh, sit in on Trish and Sarah's podcast where the two of them were <laughs> fucking furious. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, they I were right. Wait, I was, can't wait to get caught up on that. They just beat the hell out of the infantry, and then they pinned them. But before they could count to three, Buddy Matthews like pulled the guy's head up himself to get out of the hole, just so he could like beat him up some more. But then Mark Briscoe interfered, and so then they were both like lying flat, passed out in the ring, while what's his name Brody chased Mark Briscoe out, and then the infantry guy just kind of like rolled over and threw his hand like listlessly on buddy and it counted as a pin it was real gross how's a black are such frankly turds and (laughs) um i don't want to hear about them anymore i want them to go to wwe or wherever they want to go if they want to go somewhere else they don't Mm. and um that's all i have to say about that oh and i can't be i can't be seeing dax's tweets about dax's buddy buddy tweets any whatever we can't even get into it it's not on the schedule (laughs) 
<laughs> it's just private bitching. Uh, okay, and then Best Friends 2.0 Dustin's Dead Edition, as I've called it, one <laughs> versus Callus Family on Dynamite. Uh, they also had a match versus Dark Order on last week's Rampage. Um, what do you guys want to talk about here? Leah, I unfortunately didn't see this match, but I'm happy to discuss it. If you have something to say. Well, I mean, not like anything like intense. Uh, we talked about it a little bit bef- on last week's episode, but just the, I like, missed that. Sorry. Yeah, because you were at the rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, when I listened to the episode, oh, I oh. don't remember what you said about it. Oh, just that it was like an incredibly, incredibly classic Chikara match, which made me feel very like fond because it was like, it was like straight out of something that would be on dark. Like the, mm. the Dark Order versus... Uh, I mean, obviously, it would have Dustin in my fantasies, but like, it, <laughs> <laughs> are you? I mean, your really fantasies, to be clear, place. are you in outer space, and are you preventing <laughs> the Earth from getting destroyed by nuclear fallout with him? And is it totally above it is, board? Professional? <laughs> it is not professional, and I'm sorry, I will be distracting him. The Earth will burn. <laughs> Oh my God! We're here burning on Earth while Leah and Dustin get it onto the spaceship. <laughs> well, I, in fairness to Leah, I don't think that Dustin was really going to buckle down whether he was getting distracted or not. Yeah, and I mean, like, I don't think it's going to be a sexy situation. We didn't situation. send our best. It's, gonna, no, it's not going to be a sexy situation because Dustin's just going to complain the whole time. He's going to be like, <laughs> "The Sixers burned too." <laughs> 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 just crying no basketball ever again <laughs> no Sixers it's like where's old Cassidy I can't live like this <laughs> oh that's our special boy um uh, go ahead Leah sorry uh no I don't have anything like particularly smart to say I just thought it was like an incredibly like classic cute little match and I was like it's our three year anniversary and this was like there, this kind of match was the exact reason that we got into wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. I just felt very moved about that. I was like, yeah. they still like doing that. I love That's that really match nice. too. It's so nice. I love the Dark Order and I love I when there used to be a lot more silly little guy stuff there's, in this promotion. And there's not I that still many like AEW, but we're not as silly as we used to be. So true. Restore the feeling, more like restore the silly feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get goofy. Get a little silly. Get goofy, AEW. <laughs> I really do. I'm like become one of those people who's like, I really do think dark needs to come back. I need dark. You know, yeah. dark, we didn't appreciate. We didn't Actually, appreciate. I think, by the, by, I think by the time they were getting rid of dark, we did kind of appreciate like dark serves a pretty important purpose though. Yeah. Yeah. Don't we need that? And I, we do. I really yeah. think like, I mean, not to get off topic, but I think the acclaimed need and I don't I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean I think no Max Caster needs to be experimenting with gross mm. things on dark and seeing what yeah. what hits and he can't what do it. S- yeah. yeah. It's like what you're co- saying is completely normal. You're like he needs to do the, the comedy club circuit. Mm-hmm. I mean or like right, the wrestling feels, version of it. Yeah. It feels insulting to be like the acclaim belong on dark, but it's like that's not what I mean. Like I, I think they yeah. know he needs to be able to try out his material. Like yeah. he tried like ten different disgusting like he was making out with people's hands. He was humping them in the ring. And then scissoring was what stuck. You know, that's how you like find yeah. your joke that, that yeah. hits. What th- Weird that scissoring was the one that stuck, but yeah, it was. You know, I think though that like, it's not just Max Caster. There's lots no, of people lots on the roster them. who would benefit from getting to go on dark and do some different dumb shit every single yeah. week until right. suddenly people are like, oh, fuck, we love that actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's just more obviously more highlighted right now with the acclaimed because I believe they are still in possession of those belts. Yeah. They still have those yeah. belts. They sure are, yeah. They're, I believe that they're parked there. I would not say that they're holding them. They're parked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, too bad that Collision's just like so boring every week too. I mean, it's not always, but it's like there's just a lot of wasted TV time. Yeah. Well, don't worry about that, Anne, because when they add a third hour permanently to Dynamite, <laughs> there'll be plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that I had to see a, a tweet today from somebody in the IWC being like, stop being such n- so negative every time something happens. Like just because they had this third hour, like you don't need to start like doom and glooming about how we're going to end up with three hours. And I was like, 
I'm so sorry. Often, I agree, we don't need to doom and gloom, but I think it's very important that we have a timely discussion about our willingness to engage with three. I know some of you have been watching WWE Raw for 20 years, so it doesn't phase you. Three hours of wrestling per week. When I'm into a just a normal-ass TV show, like I'm watching my interview with a vampire, which is coming back in May, ooh, uh, it's one episode a week. Nate, yeah. I think that's right. An hour it's, at most. An hour. A perfect hour that then I can take away and unpack and write little notes in my diary about. <laughs> Three hours. Two hours has stretched us. Okay? And I think we've grown a lot yeah. as girls. <laughs> as girls and women. As girls. Our, our minds have expanded. We've received new wrinkles in our brains. Mm. And we are able and to around. handle. We are able to handle two hours. <laughs> Three hours. No, we three can't. Three hours? I can't We do gotta that. go to sleep. even handle three hours of interview with a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've recently true, learned too much. that we can only do two hours of The Sopranos, and then we're like, we're yeah, not smart that's true. That is quite true. That's true. Well, we have to peace out. It's about, I think we could do, I think we can do up to four hours a week, but it's really pushing it, and only two hours a night, and actually two hours a night is pushing it. Yeah. So maybe you're right. Yeah, Maybe depending on how much those episodes ask of us. Yeah, some some go down easier than others, but yeah, two is about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me ask well, you this: If mm. they said to you, I think I start. Actually, did I ask Anne this question last week? If they got rid of collision, but the trade off is that it was a three hour dynamite, would that be easier on our schedules to not have to watch another show, or would it be? I don't know. Mm. I would I've, take that trade off because I have no emotional connection to collision. I don't know that I think it would be better for us. And actually, as I say it, I'm like, would I end up regretting it? I don't know. But intellectually, I would make that trade off. Yeah. I would make that trade off because a third hour of dynamite is going to be more entertaining than two hours of collision. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. But if, and this feels more likely, if you are canceling Rampage yeah. and replacing it with three hour dynamite, but then there's still a two hour collision, kill mm. me. Yeah. That, mm. that doesn't work for yeah. me, brother. Yeah. No. I refuse yeah. to do that job. Rampage <laughs> Except never. I will because we're handcuffed in this podcast. <laughs> Tony said, girls, you will lie down <laughs> and you will take it. I can't, I can't lie down. As Ann pointed out, we're handcuffed. <laughs> we're on the turnbuckle tone. Rampage, them canceling Rampage would be like such a waste because I'm like, Rampage never bothers me because it's like sometimes I'm around and I watch it and I have a nice time for yeah. an hour. But when I don't watch it, it never it negatively impacts my experience. Yeah. Like nobody's ever like, if you did you see Rampage? Because if you didn't, yeah. you're in trouble. It also is like I don't I know everyone has different experiences of their of their week and of linear time and whatever, <laughs> their social engagements and stuff, but when we all happen to be around on a cheeky Friday night and one of us says, anyone tune in into Rampage? And then a little gaggle of girls, we're just watching Rampage together. That is uh, honestly a treasured a treasured feeling and memory for me. I feel so happy when we all tune into Rampage. That does not ever happen with Collision, A. Eh? And sometimes we have watched Collision, and it still does not have that sexy Friday night feeling. No. Because it's, it's Saturday. Because when it's 10 o'clock on a Friday, it's like you've already done your activities for the evening. Uh, yeah. You know, you're just like in a little relaxation time. But it's 8 o'clock on a Saturday and you're home and you're watching it. But it's like two hours of slog and the House of Black is doing something. It's just not it's not a party energy. I feel like there are psychological considerations here that, that no, one is, no one is talking about. Yeah. Okay. So we true. love Friday Night Rampage. So true. Save our show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Damn the man. Save the empire. <laughs> I think that's an, I think that's quite enough of this topic, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> All right, let's move on to our final topic of the night. We're going to check in on the title scene. Swerve got a backstage promo on Dynamite where he said he'd fight a big man for some reason. <laughs> man unspecified, reason unknown by me. Anyone? No, not, not a clue. No, amazing. Mm -mm. So then 
on Dynamite, he did fight a big man who was the butcher, who was looking good. He has really yeah. cleaned up, I think, his whole facial hair situation. The, like he's, The comedy mustache he his, is gone. The weird, you know. like, long flowing hair, like, is gone. He just looks really clean and sexy. <laughs> Now I feel bad because you've said that, and I'm just like, oh my god! It's like I'm I am gentrification. Like I'm just like he can't be a freak anymore. Are we keeping Portland weird or not? (laughs) (laughs) I'm the problem. No, I mean that's another thing where it's like, yeah, of course I treasured my time when the butcher and the blade would come out for AEW Dark, looking like the pillars of the 24/7 BDSM community. Of course. Honestly, I they're both them. really hot. I kind of love both of them. I mean, this felt like a very like like downscale match for Swerve, like status wise. But I was so happy to see the butcher. Well, I guess if you ask for a big man on short notice, there's <laughs> a limit. I just you picture know. I picture Tony in the back rummaging through his meat drawer. <laughs> like, oh, he's got God. binders full of big men. But- <laughs> Binders full of meat, yeah. And they're like, oh, we're using Hobbs already. What do we do? Miro, oh move God. back to Bulgaria. God, what? God, I need another big man. Uh, that's a dangerous situation, actually, because I can see if you do too many of this, like, I need a big man tonight, sooner or later, Tony's going to be like, can we just pick up another five big men? Do you think it's worth it? I think if we just, should we just get another five big, let's, you know, just, let's get another five big men and let's get another five little guys, too. Just to, you know, just to cover He's our at bases. the estate scales. He's like, they come in packs of five. So I'm just, yeah. Costco. He's at, he's at Costco being like, he's at Costco, listen, yeah. it's, I mean, the price, you can't beat the I'll price. use them. Yeah, yeah I'll, right. I'll use them eventually. Absolutely. God. He is, you know what? Spend that money, Tone. I, I will always encourage him to spend the money. He's mm-hmm. not going to run out. No, he should be spending it on something I like. And when, wrestlers are so like underpaid beautiful compared marble compared statues. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> marble statues. And wrestlers are so underpaid compared to other athletes. It's actually outrageous. They should be I know. paid way more percent wise. Yeah, I'm. I'm worried about some of them. I know. Well, we're talking about this topic. Okay. <laughs> We're doing great. This uh, this cocktail has not affected and me at all. Cheers, Again, baby. Yeah. We're great at podcasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're great at podcast. Well, you know, we don't usually have our, our little holes. Mm, uh, maybe <laughs> just roll that back, I would say. <laughs> we don't usually have our little holes. So true. I keep so almost wise. saying, it's really just a Negroni, so I keep almost saying Negroni, and then at the last minute, I'm like, well, I should call it by <laughs> by its name that we're drinking it for the hole. <laughs> which is not right it's the tunnel it's the tunnel but like we should just be calling it the good boy ho- boy hole you the know good boy hole oh you're right our little everyone good boy in the social suplex network discord is addicted to saying the good boy hole which i love i really it's, enjoy it uh, oh my god really made my month yeah you know what oh, we need to feet. address right now yeah. we just wow need to talk. oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah so on yeah. one nation radio <laughs> they, i can't believe we almost forgot this a listener <laughs> asked a question are the Tunnel Talk girls in defeat? And yeah. James, not Reddit, out of nowhere, they, no, they there was had a, stumbled into their there own was a proceeding. Foot yeah, they, conversation. They ended up in that discussion on their own. But yeah, James for a minute read it as the Tunnel Talk girls are in defeat, and yeah. I would like to thank him for the way he tried to come up with a non-judgmental oh. <laughs> I mean, I those girls, they said, like what they like. He said, I didn't know that. <laughs> he, it, was a, it was a very delicate, that's between them and their God energy, <laughs> as so many things are. Uh, no. I am willing to say, oh, go ahead, Lee. No, I was just going to say, are you girls in defeat? Well, I was going to come out and say, I don't, of course, no kink shaming. No on kink AW shaming. Dark. I personally am not into feet. No. But I am interested in the role of foot fetishism on the internet. It is among interesting. minor celebrities. It's like that's how you know you've made it is yeah. that you're on the foot fetish website. Yeah. Not us. You know? No, not us. Although like when I was yeah, like 23, me and my friends got pedicures and like took pictures of our feet and then like had them up on Flickr.com oh, so you can really yeah. date me. And then when we had like taken regular like pictures of us, you know, like selfies at the same time. And then one of my friends was like, 
these foot pictures are getting way more hits than the other ones. I think I'm going to take it down. <laughs> we were like, oh, and this was like whatever, you know, like 2004 or whatever. Yeah. So we were, it was, I had not been aware that that was a thing. Wow. But that was a real, so that was a real learning opportunity. Was, I mean, the internet teaches you so much. Yeah. Do yeah. either of you follow the, um, the TikTok guy who, do, who does that series of like how to, p- uh, things to say to piss off men? No. no, I've seen videos of it, but I don't yeah. follow he just, him. They're he so does, funny. He does these short videos where he like just names things. Like one of them was, uh, were you a, <laughs> what a, were you a preemie? Oh, <laughs> you just look like someone who was born prematurely. <laughs> like, okay, that that's mean? really funny. That's so but funny. The, the, the I thing, think it was one of his like, oh, Bitcoin, like get them to explain Bitcoin to you and then say, oh, it's like Cole's cash. <laughs> But one of the things that happens is that his listeners will sometimes come up with things to say to him to see if they could get him upset. And one of them was that someone created a profile for him on that foot fetish website, but listed his foot size as four. And and, and he was like, whoever did that, you can go to hell. (laughs) Anyways, I'm not... James, I'd like to tell you, I'm not into feet, but I'm also not grossed out by feet. Uh, I, I don't want to say it only to James. I want to say it to the <laughs> to the ONR listener who heard them talking about freak shit and said, I better check and see if the tunnel talk goes around. <laughs> I did appreciate that. I'm like, yeah, when any su- social You're suplex... You're right to ask. Any so- so- social suplex host wanders into weird sex territory, just stop yourself <laughs> and think... Hey, what would the tunnel girl, tunnel talk girl say? Say, hey, we've got a couple of subject matter experts here on the <laughs> network. So let's shoot this one over to them. Feel free to send us almost anything. When James read it as a statement, I did have a moment where I was like, have we ever said anything about feet? I was like, I don't think my girls are into feet. I bet, but I mean, yeah. did we ever imply that we were? It's possible. I, if, but if it is easy to, to me, imagine us talking yeah. ourselves into a corner yeah. where suddenly <laughs> we are being like, there's nothing better than a good Absolutely. foot. Am I right? If somebody aggressively was like, yeah, but in Someone's episode... Someone's clipping that. If somebody was like, in episode 75, you guys really were in defeat. I'd be like, I, maybe. I mean, I, I can't c- confidently say we didn't say that. Yeah. being like, whose feet? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a couple more details. <laughs> what was the context? I mean... Y'all want to uh, talk about Swerve? Yeah. Let's get back to uh, is it. Is that our topic? Let's, e- let's easily get back to it. <laughs> Um, he, so he did fight the butcher, could be a foot fetishist, hard to say. And then he had a post-match promo about wanting to fight Joe and Smojo came out and was ultimately was like, sure, we can fight. Then Don Callis came out and was like, what the fuck? There's a line, no cutsies. Uh, and he said, Swerve needs to fight Takeshita first. And Swerve was like, okay, I'll fight Takeshita, but then I'm coming for you, Joe. So now that's what's happening next week. Now I do think I'm not, look. You know me. I'm an easygoing, fun-loving girl. I'm not mad at anyone. I did think to myself, okay, we are kind of drawing out a part of this storyline a little bit that I'm not sure we're getting a lot of uh, new stuff out yeah. of. Okay, well, uh, yes, I will fight that guy, but then I'll come back and fight you. So, you know. Yeah, I think the Swerve Joe, like I've been thinking about this and I'm like, it's feeling like less important, like whatever. I was like, is it the debuts? I don't even know if it is the debuts. I feel like the problem is that the action was always between Swerve and Hangman and I just, Swerve and Joe is like nothing. Like they don't It doesn't have to be. It's just that Swerve is not clarifying where his head is at. So the thing is that like if you come out of the pay-per-view and say like Swerve feels humiliated and furious that that hangman did take this away from him. Like hangman swore that the, he was going to, and he did. He ta- he tapped out deliberately to fuck Swerve up, and Swerve is now having to sit with like, do I deserve this? What kind of man gets to win the title? Am I somebody who can win the title? I don't know. And then he was coming. Like I don't know exactly how you would do this, but it's like if he was coming into like the Takeshita match, being like, fine. If you say that I have to earn it, then I'm gonna earn it, and I'm mm, gonna, I'll do this yeah. the right way. Then, sure. if you if, if if winning it the wrong way is what kept me from getting it that night, then fine, I'll try it this other way. And that's how he stepped into being a face mm. that would rule. 
But instead, oh. it is like it's just muddy because it's like he's beating up security guards. He's carrying no, no. around it's this chain and like also being no, no. like weirdly aggressive with the chain. And like his vibe is just very heelish. And it's like, okay, well, what the reason why this the feud with Joe doesn't feel specific is because Swerve doesn't feel like clarified right now. Like, I just don't know what's I don't know what's going on with him. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think it could work to have him be like turning face kind of gradually, you know, where he's like still kind of his old ways, he's fighting them and whatever. But you're right, like if he was hitting harder, like his humiliation and trying to prove himself in a way, like if he had a clearer emotional journey he was on, it probably wouldn't matter so much that I'm not getting so much from Joe himself, you know, and it would like... <laughs> I just feel like I should feel really emotionally invested in Swerve getting the belt. And right now he's not driving home as much like what that's going to do for him emotionally. Yeah. I do keep accidentally, I'm, I'm singing a little Les Mis song in my head. I'm like, should he be doing like a who am I, like a Jean Valjean kind of deal? Like, do we need a little more of that? I think the other thing is like, what is Joe doing? Like yeah. he's not wrestling very much. Um, so we're back in like kind of like non-defending champ territory again. Uh, I don't think that th- this is a little tricky because obviously the thing that was really going wrong towards the end of MJF's reign was the amount of screen time that he was getting and the amount of focus that he was getting, which was too outsized. Mm-hmm. But I do think a difficulty of having all these new debuts is that because they are new and I don't even blame Tony for this. I think it's just, it's the, it's the nature of the beast and it's the crowds, it's everything. Because they are new, like they are the shiny toys of the show and they are getting a lot of the energy that the crowds have to give and they're kind of the focus of like, because we're trying to figure out where do you, where are they going to be slotted in? Like how are we going to work them into the normal ecosystem? So Joe and the title are re- pretty secondary right now. I'm not really sure like what you're supposed to do to counter that, but I think that it makes the intensity of like a Swerve Joe feud naturally kind of like lower because it's like, oh, you want the belt that nobody's talking about and nobody cares about? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, oh, well, well, what what do you really And Joe's been so clearly a transitional champion the whole time, too, that it doesn't feel like a... Well, because he has, yeah, he has no I want song. Yeah, He's nothing. Like, I kept saying people, seeing people be like, oh, Joe did such a better job than Swerve this week. And I was like, Joe gave me nothing. Like, I don't know who he is. Like, every once in a while something comes through, but, like, it wasn't this week. Like, And I wonder if the world title seeming unport unimportant is a consequence of both Osprey and Akata coming in and not being anywhere interested in it which it's like we didn't want them to be right like we like we're like yeah they can't win the title yet but a consequence of both of them coming into this company with like a fever in their hearts but not in any way like being interested does make it seem like it's like oh well if they don't want it who would Yeah, and I feel like the last two weeks I was kind of giving the whole show like more of a pass. It's like there's shiny new toys, like we're giving them some space, but I felt like this week like it needed to click in a little more to it. Like, And it makes sense that it didn't quite, but it does feel like Revolution is on the horizon and the the world title storyline needs to like kick into gear more. Yeah, but I think also I am coming back again to I'm like if I if I understood more about Joe as a person and I like mm-hmm. understood his attachment to the belt in a way that wasn't largely like no you can't have this then like it would make the belt feel more important like I know that I guess that's I know right. that yeah. people in the IWC don't like to hear that from us but well like, it is like you know. Joe is like, you know, he's however old he is, 45 or something. So it's like end of his career. It is a big deal for him. Like people who are invested in ROH are very invested in that. So if it was like for Joe, this is like his last big run, you know, like he could invest it with some kind of importance Say it, baby. to him, like creating a legacy, like holding world title belt. But yeah, he's just really not. I guess not that is, I understand what people me. said before about how he's a good talker. Like, he is really good at, like, he gets stuff yeah, and then delivery. he gives back. But it, he's not giving me anything of himself. Go ahead, Leah. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. I guess that part didn't bother me because, to me, Joe is a cracker. Like, he just gives me, he's the conveyance <laughs> of cheese. Like, 
Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like he is what is going to bring Swerve's story to my mouth, but he Swerve isn't doing like doing that right now. So then we're, I'm just left with like a Ritz cracker, which is nothing. To but me. I, yeah, but I think I if Swerve had somebody to that, play off of more, like I think you would get more out of him too, but, you know? Or would that just hide like the fact that Swerve is not clarifying? Like, is that what like Hangman, like the fact that like Hangman and Swerve had such electric chemistry, was that hiding the fact that Swerve really has not clarified who he is? Like, yeah. Is that distracting? I don't I mean, know. I'm I, not, felt, I felt I'm not more like I back knew who on. he was before. Like, I agree that I have lost sight of of Swerve's character arc in this moment and that I don't feel that confident about like what Swerve wants to convey beyond I want the belt. And I think he does want to convey things. Like he clearly is very invested in like having a character who has like a, an actual psychology, but I do feel like it's I'm not sure what to yeah. focus on right now because we've gone back and forth kind of like hot cold heel face hot cold heel face I don't think he needs to be like a super hard heel or a super hard face but it I need my I need to feel confident about the I want song you know what I yeah. mean um, and I don't but I also don't think that you can have an effective like a really effective title feud that I'm engaged with with a with cracker and cheese i think yeah, they yeah. may it may need to be an actual cracker that i would eat on its own and a cheese i would eat on its own i think they both need to be bringing something mm. to yeah. the table and people when they're interacting they bring stuff out of each other that exactly clarifies. and if yes. you have one person that's like not bringing much to the table and you just kind of bounce off it like it's it's just it makes it harder like swerves definitely needs to clarify it more but i do think yeah. it's making it harder for him to to do that when there's not a lot there yeah yeah and just to clarify, like, obviously, like, I'm still in Swerve's corner. Like, I feel no, like a of lot course. of people yeah. recently have turned on Swerve and has, like, have said some, like, so incredibly messed up shit about him. And to be clear, I am not joining that yeah. corner. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and I'm actually... I, I would I, I would do SpaceX with Swerve. Real. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. I think people really needed to hear that. <laughs> I, I feel like it needed to be said. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's true. And I think Swerve like is so charismatic. Like it has been doing such a good job. And this is really the first time he's in this like huge role. And I think I think he'll find his way out of it. Like I do feel confidence in him. And I was watching he did some interview with Sean Rassap at like the Lexington Comic yeah. Con lately, but it was really interesting to watch. I just thought he's like a very interesting person and very thoughtful about what he's doing. So I, I think he can sort of hopefully find a direction the next couple of weeks. It's, it's weird feeling like he's probably going to win it at Dynasty and it's like coming up soon and it's like, this is your run. Like that's the exciting part. Like it needs to yeah. be just a little bit more. Yeah. You know, I don't remember what I was going to say, to be honest, because of the good boy hole here, but <laughs> we're deep um, in the good boy hole. We're yeah, really deep in the I good, boy, my good hole. boy hole. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, I, I think that there's a certain amount of stuff that's going on here. That's just like when you have the three new huge debuts all at the same time, like, yeah, yeah the pH of the water is going to be whack for a while. <laughs> yeah. And I hope yeah. that it, I hope we figure it all out with chemicals soon. Do you think that sounds right? Yeah. So now we have my aquarium yeah. talk. We're adding that to the kind of cheese and cracker metaphor. Mm -hmm. So the cheese, the cheese goes into the water, which we're mm -hmm. trying <laughs> yeah. to like check the pH of. We need mm -hmm. to check the pH. We have to make sure that it's safe for the other fish that were already there. Yeah. 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 And we need to keep all these fish healthy because you can't get, don't get three new very expensive rare fish if you're not prepared <laughs> to keep them keep the, every, all the fish you keep have healthy as well this you've got to make sure that those new fish aren't going to eat uh, the old yeah. fish that I, you still they care about I think this is actually a really good metaphor and yeah I, think, I think it's working it. I mean aquariums are hard to yeah. maintain it takes a lot of thought as John Cena knows <laughs> 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 fucking John Cena <laughs> Most insane now, man in the world. And that's how These you fish should all be in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine your girls making that reference three years ago. They couldn't. Yeah. They didn't know. They didn't know. Uh, we were going to get into Hook Jericho, but we can't. So just know we haven't. We, we have our eyes on Big J. We're tracking him. And uh, I th hope that next week we'll get to have a really deep discussion about 
what what to do with him? <laughs> what do okay? you do How with do a problem? How do you solve a like problem? Jer- <laughs> like <Chris> oh, Lord. <laughs> Did you guys read the Aaron Rakowski article about? Um, no. Yeah, can you send us a link? I Maybe. will do that. I will do that. Sweet um, girl. And Thank you. To, I can also tweet it, but um, I think it pretty much summed up what we were going to say. So hopefully. Oh, great. Hopefully next Perfect. week. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Hopefully next week we'll be able to be like, and Chris Jericho has fixed the thing that we were co- going to complain about. I love I to wanna, cheat on our homework. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I'm very excited to see if the heel turns next week, and that's all I'll say about that. Um, I think that's got to be our show. Surely. Happy anniversary. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary. Um, Oh, I did just want to say at the end here, I meant to say it at the beginning, we are recording our bonus episode this weekend uh, with all the stuff that you guys have sent us. Uh, so we're very excited. As you no, probably most of you. Uh, if you give us a five star review on any platform, let us know. We'll watch something of your choice. We have some really good stuff on the docket for this weekend. I think we're going to go on quite a journey. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I'm we excited. have to we have to talk about timing because I think we've got to dedicate a couple hours to this. We've gotten some <laughs> yeah, good we got, stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we're going to have to. Yeah, we'll be we'll be quite enga- engaged. engaged. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be quite engaged. So don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere we'll, we'll, talk, we'll so take it off on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that wasn't even that was like it was kind of flirting with Australia. <laughs> not quite getting there. And you're allowed to do that. That's not I can do cultural yeah, appropriation. Exactly. If you got the passport, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so on that note, I have been Allie. I've been Anne. And I've been Leah. Oh, baby, it's Tunnel Talk. Three years of Tunnel Talk. Three years. Our theme, our theme is by Chris Gorgon. You can find us on Twitter and Tumblr at Tunnel Talk Pod via email, tunneltalkpod at gmail.com. Please rate, review, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on the Social Suplex Network feed where you can check out some of the other great podcasts on the network. And if you want, you can come join us in the Social Suplex Discord where we're learning a lot about cannibalism <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Maritime and love, as always, baby. Maritime oh, love, yeah. baby. as always, please, please come back next week.